Hey Dax, I want to talk about a really specific action you can take and should be taking and thinking about in your offices right now. And um, that is really going to help tremendously um, by decreasing stress around kids and adults. Um, because really, we're talking about everybody right now because everybody's in stress. But um, especially kids with deflective disorders coming into your practice right now. So one of the things that we talk a lot about, and you learn more about in the seminars, like the why behind it, but one of the things we talk a lot about is increasing visual imagery um, to increase the ability for one's ability to predict. We've been talking a lot about that in the last couple of days or weeks because there's a decrease in that ability right now. Now, we know that when we have a decrease in prediction, we have a decrease in um, control. And when you see decreased visualization, decreased prediction, decreased control, increased anxiety, increased deflective behavior. So if, those, if you guys are staying open, if you're in your office right now, now this is a little different um, for those of you who aren't, who've had to shut down or who have shut down, um, and then we need to apply this strategy for when we come back. But for those of you who are opening or are, are still open, you need to, and you're taking different precautions, so you're spraying the tables differently. Kids are, you know, having to not wait in your waiting room, but maybe they're waiting in your car. Maybe you have a mask on. Maybe there's a different way in which they interact in your office. There's usually snacks, now there's no snacks. There's usually a toy box or stickers or whatever, and now there's none of that. So to us, this might not seem like a huge deal. It might not seem like a really big deal that these things um, aren't there. It might seem like kind of just an inconvenience, but not something that's gonna create a huge problem. I have to tell you, that's not the case. For a lot of these kids and adults that you work with in this neurodeflective realm, just these changes in what we call their pegs or their routinized behavior when they come into your office is a big problem. And it's going to, whether you see the behaviors in your office or whether you, the parents see them at home, they're going to not want to bring them to your office, even if they're super well-educated patients on why they should be and how what you're doing is helping. If you don't handle this to the best of your ability and make these specific changes in order to help this, what's going to happen is they're not going to want to bring their kids to your office because after and before they come to your office, their kids are major deflecting. They're getting major pushback, major anxiety, major behaviors, and that is a problem. So here's what I want you to do. It's going to feel silly. I want you to make a video, literally a video, not a ton of words, not over explaining, but I want you to make a video like a little office tour of you and whoever your office staff is going to be showing them like, Make it silly if you can, not, and then tell the parents we're in an email, however you disseminate this. We're not making light of this scenario, but we do want to get a little bit of humor in this because it's going to be good for your kids to see that. See that we're not afraid, we're not doing these things because we're afraid. Um, also, humor is going to be good for retention and processing of this and get the kids engaged and, and the parents engaged in watching it. So, what I want you to do is literally, like if it's there in our office, you know, the cards come up, they wait in their car and they call in. Have that part of the video. Have one of your CAs pull up in a car, call in. You're taking, just take a video with your iPhone and you're seeing what that's going to be like. Then they're going to come in and they go to the snack. Nope, no snacks today. Make a little joke about that. Show them how they're going to go right in. Um, maybe they have to wash their hands first. Whatever your process is, they're going to go, go right in. They're going to see the doctor. What's the doctor going to be looking like? Does the doctor have a mask on? Does the doctor have anything different that's going to be happening? Do they normally swipe their cards in our office? They do to check in, and now you're asking them not to. Show them, make it a little bit light, make it a little bit silly at times when you can. Again, not to be dismissive, and you need to explain that to the parents, but it's going to help. And just show them. Go through the process. Don't use a ton of words explaining. Use some words but use mostly just gestures. You're showing them, this is what we're doing. This is what they can expect. This is what the doctors are gonna look like. This is what the space is gonna look like. This is what's different about the space. And here are the pegs or the routine that you get to expect and we will do for you when you come in. Super, super important. This will guide their ability to process what's gonna happen when they come to your office. It's not just a little thing. You know, we think, oh, it's a little thing. Everybody can kind of roll with that. We need to help them prepare. And then we need to 
and get that information to the parents um, before they come in. Not like after we're trying to do this right, right, like right as they pull in, we're having them watch a video. You need to get this to them as soon as possible to give them as much preparation as possible and explain to the parents, even of the older kids, hey, I really want, and this isn't just for kids with neurodevelopmental or neuroreflective disorders, this is for everybody. This is for the patients, the parents, the adults who come to your practice as well. You may think it's silly and you should say that. I get this seems really silly, but what we know about the brain is this is really important and we really want you to show this to your kids. We really want you to watch it so that you can see. We're not afraid. We're just taking these precautions. We need to. This is the best choice, but we want to make sure that you know what to expect, um, that you know how to do this, and you know it's going to go back. You know, we're going to, this isn't a forever thing, but this is where we are right now. This will go so far from a patient communication, building rapport, retention, them knowing that you're connecting with them, connecting with their kids, and from a procedural standpoint, it's going to be absolutely critical for you to help lower the stress and anxiety for the experience for these kids and families in your office so that you can keep them coming and keep providing your service. So this is important on all fronts. I really hope that you will not just consider this, but please do this. We are absolutely important in this, in this uh, healthcare situation. We know that, but we better change our procedures, up our procedures, up our communication, up our game so that we can help people in this unique time. We are here for you. Remember, there's always a reason for behavior. Every single uh, upgrade or process change or communication changes because we're looking at how individuals process and how we can better meet them where they are. You guys are wonderful. I'm happy to have you on the Focus team. Go out there, serve your people, help your communities, do good work.